Hi everybody, it's Faith from Creative Bug coming at you live like we do every Tuesday and Thursday and today I have one of my most specialist of guests, Sunny Phillip. Hi guys. Please introduce yourself. Who are you? What are you uh, doing here? What am I doing here? Uh, my name is Sonia Phillip and uh, I'm a designer and an artist and also a Creative Bug instructor and I have a new class which is going live tomorrow. Very exciting. Dress number two. That's part of the wardrobe basics series. And it's Sorry. so good. So good. I'm I, looking forward to I it. have one article of clothing I wear all the time. I wore it on the last shoot, which is why I couldn't wear it today. Oh, okay. And the I'm actually not wearing it right now. I'm wearing tunic number one, which is from the last class. But, okay. but it's a really special class because it starts off with one pattern, and then in the class you learn how to make four garments with that pattern. And it's really versatile, and it's really easy to wear, and it looks absolutely amazing. And I feel like class releases are like the class birthdays. I get really excited about them. So I'm so glad to have you here. Yay! And we are going to be doing block printing on fabric and the reason why I wanted to do this with Sonia is I think that you're known for, even though you're wearing a, a, a solid color oh. shirt, totally proving me wrong, I think you're known for your <laughs> patterns and your use of fabric and yes. colors. And so we are going to be using a technique that is um, on our site, Block Printing with Fabric, Leanne is going to post you a link to Jen Hewitt's class, who also wrote an amazing book about it called Print Pattern So, and we absolutely adore Jen. Um, and this is a really special technique if you are new to sewing, but you want to play around with fabric, or if you're an experienced seamstress and want to get into printing techniques. So let's I'll see get... Janet. Oh, you can, you can flip through. Um, this has patterns wow. and how-tos. Sorry, that's my dog barking in the background. And it's a great book. It's a really lovely book. And it just came out. Yeah. Willie, come here. We so, do have a special guest today, Willie. Willie, come here. Willie. <laughs> I brought my dog, oh, Willie. And the reason I brought my dog was because Faith made this amazing stamp here. It's a custom Willie stamp. Um, yes, and so you can see that it's all scruff-tastic, just like he is. I made myself a cat stamp because I am a cat person, but of course I had to pay tribute to the wonderful Willie. Also, you can follow Willie on Instagram, Willie the Terrier. He makes me smile every day, um, especially when he's not barking. Yeah, hopefully he'll go to you, Cyrus. Okay, here, he's going to go off camera now so we can get printing. So for this, you will need fabric yardage, or Sonia is going to be working with pre-cut pattern. Yeah, I like when I dye stuff or have printed, um, I like to like cut my fabric out already. This is linen. It's already been uh, washed and dried, and I cut it out just because instead of like printing the whole yardage, then I just know exactly, you know, if I'm doing something like shibori or if I am printing, then I'll know exactly where the placement is. I'm not necessarily like using all this time um, printing yardage. Just I'm all about the shortcuts. But I will be using all this time <laughs> printing yardage because I don't know exactly what I want to do with it. I have some ideas, really cute ones, but um, I don't know if I want to commit yet. You'll also need a foam roller. You can get one, a four inch one from a craft store. This one's a little bit more heavy duty and a brayer or a baron, and this is just to apply pressure to your stamp. And the ink you'll need, Sonia will be using Fabric Paint by Tulip Brand, and I'll be using Screen Printing Ink by Speedball. You'll also need something to roll it out on. Um, a square of plexiglass is great. I wouldn't recommend um, something porous, like a paper plate, because then you end up losing out on a bit of ink. So go ahead and... Oh, and we're also um, printing just on a, a surface because unlike printing on paper, there will be some seepage with the ink, and so you want to protect. But what's a little better than newsprint is we're just using um, batting. This is like cotton quilt batting, which you can get at most um, 
most stores. They just sell them in packs. And e all of that information is in Jen's class and also in Jen's book, like the whole everything, everything you would need. And another good thing is like a big ruler or straight edge just if you want to then like align stuff as you're I'm so excited to see what you do with that top. Stuff. Yes. Okay. So let's get squeezing. <laughs> or in my case, squeezing. You've got like a corner, like a finishing roller right there. Yes. It's like the pro prosumer. <laughs> We're gonna dot out a line of ink at the top. I'm squeezing. And Faith told me that, and it's it's true that this these foam rollers soak up so much ink. So. And we're going to keep rolling until it's totally coated. So you'll see there's some blank spots. I'm just going to add gonna get some more. Secure. That's more of Willie's natural color. I was printing him That is a Willie color. Blue. He's kind of, he, he reads as white, but sometimes he looks, he looks kind of nicotine stained. So. <laughs> you know what you use for that? A little blue rinse, right? Blueing. <laughs> so I, no, I'll tell you my blueing story in a minute. Now that we've had the surface of this totally inked up, we'll place it on our fabric. You want to kind of just like go straight up and down, like just flop it. And you can tap along the back, and that's what I like the brayer for. You can show them the brayer is it applies even pressure all the way across. Now, the best thing to have on hand when you're block printing is realistic expectations. Because sometimes, oh, that is so cute, I can't even stand it. <laughs> oh my goodness. I know, a little adorable dog. So you'll see some of the background color shows through. It's not a super thick application of paint, and that's totally fine. Also, you'll see like a little bit of the, uh, the stamp, things yeah. that weren't necessarily totally carved away. I actually really like those because you can tell it was handmade. Jen calls that background noise. Background and noise. You just don't fret that stuff. Like that it's atmosphere. like yeah that it's it's exactly it shows that it's that it's handmade and it's not because if you were just trying to get rid of it because you can like once you print something and definitely we both tested these out like and so definitely before you start printing test your stamps out and once just because you've carved it and printed with it you can go back and like take more, it's a subtractive technique, but kind of like, you know, cutting your bangs or something. <laughs> it's like once you start, you can just be like, oh, oh, now I'm gonna take a little bit more away. That's a really good parallel. And then before you know it, you've got no more stamp left, yeah. These are, what we're using are these little rubber, um, so I don't know, I did a lot of uh, printmaking in high school and we would use lino um, mm -hmm. But these are rubber, and so they're almost like eraser material, and they're really, I guess they're called Easy Carve or something. And they are easy. <laughs> they're to like carve. the name says. They mean it. Yeah, truth in advertising, they're easy to carve. Also, don't forget, we are live. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I grabbed the wrong thing. Oh. <laughs> Do you need some baby wipes? Maybe. Because you know we have those on hand. I've got it. Um, we are live, so if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. We love answering them. If you have questions for Sonia about any of her classes or any of her patterns, um, or Willie, because yeah. we, we love to talk about Willie. So Willy. what I'm using for this top, I'm making a little sleeveless top. This is just dress number two, uh, but without the sleeves and shortened. So, um, yes. Tracy wants to know, where did you get the dog and cat patterns? Tracy, it came from my exquisite brain. <laughs> Not really. um, the cat pattern I made up and the dog pattern I um, I took a photo from Willie's Instagram and traced around it. So if you want to learn more about carving uh, carving your own blocks, we have several classes on our site. Um, a very popular one which is Jen Hewitt's and Jen Hewitt of course wrote the book on block printing fabric. That and she has, has today. she includes templates in the back, whoa, where she has patterns, but also she has templates. But hers, like her style, is mainly floral, so you're not really going to get the dog and cat related stuff here. But she does, and she also shows instructions on how to carve your own. So, and it's the most fun thing because you feel very fancy, 
And then if you accidentally cut yourself and then you're bleeding a lot, but then there's like paint, you see, you see like one of those tortured artists who's just covered with paint and wounds. And you say, I suffer for my art. I suffer for my art. I really was fine. I had no incidents with carving him. Uh, Christine wants to know, what material is the stamp made from? Christine wants to know, what material is the stamp made from? Rubber, just like a pencil eraser. So it's pink like a pencil eraser. And Sam actually said, does it erase things? And we tried it. It does. It erases things. Oh. <laughs> Imagine that. Some people like to um, mount their rubber blocks on a piece of wood. Or plexi, too. Or plexi, that can be very helpful. Um, it's a little less messy, but I really like having it just plain. Um, I have a lot of craft stuff everywhere, so it saves me, you know, that quarter of an inch of not being mounted. It saves me a tiny bit of space, and um, every quarter inch counts. So essentially, it's like, it's like the rubber, a thick version of the rubber of a rubber stamp. So yes. that's what it is. And can you also tell the folks at home, what kind of paint are you using and how long does it take to dry? So your best bet with your paint is to read the packaging instructions because I went through a couple different fabric paints and each brand has its own drying time. So this says lay dry flat for four hours and then after 72, tumble dry low, where this is a screen printing ink and that has different directions. Um, but all this stuff, you should definitely lay flat and let it dry off for a bit. Yeah. It's such a bummer if you like, it feels dry to the touch and then you fold it up and you're ready to go. Now that I'm saying that out loud, why would you do that? It's wet paint. If I were to do that, I would have been very disappointed when my dish towel was all smushed. Yeah, definitely follow the instructions on how to heat set. Because if you, especially if you're making a garment or any other thing, you'll want to, you know, not have it come out of the washing machine and be faded or just not there anymore. And would you recommend washing your fabric before you get oh, to definitely. stamping? Oh, definitely, yes, yeah. So, um, yeah, all fabric has sizing and stuff on it and, um, you know, you, uh, one great resource uh, for uh, if you wanted to print yardage um, is Dharma Trading Company. They're actually local here in oh, the Bay yeah. Area. They're in Marin County, um, but they have an absolutely fabulous catalog and website. If you look past the kind of like tie-dye, because that's what they really got into, they have lots of uh, ready to... Um, I think it's PFD, I think it's prepared for dyeing, but that works with block printing. So they oh. actually sell garments and bags and all kinds of things, um, but they also have a bunch of fabric too that's all ready. Look, I got like his little ears. Boom, boom. That's gonna be so darling. Um, yeah, so it's, you just, you wanna wash it to get rid of any sizing or anything like that. and just because you never know what's like on the surface and then if that's going to then like if you're printing on that and the ink's not actually adhering to the fibers so look at willie go he's so happy <laughs> this is like freckled willie the happiest there. top now one of my favorite well, things about your projects is you often finish things with a contrasting bias tape what yeah. do you think you're going to use for this one i don't know i'll have to find a one that's to me. This is not usually a color that I use. I just have brown? It. Brown, yeah. I don't really wear that much brown. But it is it was too serious. It was linen that was on sale. I was like, nice. Where did you find it? I can't remember now. I gotta figure out where he's going to go here. Also, please let us know at home if you have ever block printed fabric yourself and what have you made with it and what have you done with it. I'm um, pretty excited about this one. I, there are several tiny baby girls in my life and I always want to make them dresses, but by the time I get around to it, they're, they were always a little bit bigger than they were when I started. They so grow. I think this could it's be, children. this could be like a little girl dress, oh, right? Oh, totally. Yes. But then also I, I have problems. I feel like I'm picking favorites. 
Who gets the cat dress? They'll fight for the cat yeah. dresses. This is a lot of fun. It's so addictive and also like you can really zone out and then before you know it you have this beautiful fabric. And the white isn't really, like it's not a super, this is actually almond, it's a no linen. So it's not a really, I think to get like a really white white is hard because you're mm -hmm. always going to have some of the fabric show through. Um, but I kind of like this little faded look. It's so chill. <laughs> Mine is not chill. It's, yours is like, I'm a cat. Hello. Meow. I am so excited to get on an airplane tomorrow and we're going to fly to Columbus, Ohio to open up a new Joanne. Is it technically called the story of the future or is it just what I've been fantasizing it's I called? I like to think they're calling it the story of the future. In my <laughs> mind, it's the Joanne story of the future. It's like Epcot Center. The, no. Yeah, but for crafts. And I'll be that. demoing this exact technique, so you're actually getting a sneak peek. But if you want to see me in person and you live in Columbus, Ohio, please come by and say hello. Um, that would make me happier than anything. Also, I'll be there for a bunch of hours, so you have a full window of time to, to yeah. come say hi. <laughs> Bring me a nice tea if you want. <laughs> Is that ex exactly what Courtney said, too? Courtney also loves iced tea. <laughs> a couple of iced tea addicts here. We're on an iced tea kick. Oh. One more question for you. Do you recommend printing the fabric and then cutting out a pattern, or cutting out the pattern and then the question so is, oh, go ahead. I wasn't sure if you were going to repeat the question. I wasn't. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not skilled and schooled in your ways. The, the question is, now I do it in my personal life. <laughs> the question is, how do I feel about that? Well, therapist. Um, the question is, do you print the yardage first and then cut it out, or do you cut it out and then print it? As you can see, we're doing both versions, so it's based on personal preference. Every which way. I know that I want to be printing fabric, but I don't know what I want to make with it, so yeah. I'm just doing yardage. But Sonia does know. I've been like using this. What? You know what? You're the guest. Yeah. This is my <laughs> crafter's version of hospitality. Um, so Sonia already has a project in mind that she's going to do, and so she has cut it out ahead of time, and also. I noticed you did something real tricky there with the edge. So I don't know if people can see it on this camera, but you just printed it right off the edge. I did, yes. And it worked just fine. Yeah. Sorry, did that scare you? No. Okay. You got some glue on it. Oh no, it just fuzz, it just fuzz. <laughs> it's, not, it's not paint. It's okay, that's all right. Phew. Crisis <laughs> averted. No, it's all right. I love few things more than a crafting crisis because it makes me feel really important, but then there's actually zero stakes. <laughs> a knitting emergency, and I'm not calm in a knitting emergency. I'm not the person you want to go to. Oh, oh, see? Didn't we talk about this, that I'm always it, dropping things? <laughs> I will, the hardest part is if you accidentally drop it. But it, you hadn't inked it up yet. Yeah. I'm so, I distracted you. Okay, Bill has a tricky question. Uh, wait. Bill has a tricky question. Bring it on, Phil. Phil. What Phil is this? Is this a Phil well, I know? This is our Phil. Oh, all right. Your Phil. Okay, because I know a Phil who would ask a tricky question. He says, hey, ladies, do you have any tips for creating print blocks with text? Yeah, don't. <laughs> Real pain <laughs> don't in the do neck. It. No. Don't do it, Phil. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so I, I do actually, Phil, I have an answer for you. And this is, I think. Um, the question is, yeah, sorry. Um, do you have any tips for printing text? So I think what you would do is you would print it out and then you would take some like tracing paper. Or you could, you could print it out. Trace it. Trace it with pencil. Yeah. Put it down on the rubber yes. and scrub. So yes. that's the easiest way to right? a, a bone, bone folder. folder. Or, or a, a spoon. And then so you get the reverse yeah. on top of your stamp. And then carve around it. So you want it to be backwards when you're looking at your stamp. When you're yeah. looking at your stamp, you want it to be backwards. But I would not, I, I'm not, I would not, personally I wouldn't do it because I would get almost all of it right. 
my daughter just graduated and I had to, this is like not, just to show how bad I am with letters, I had, had some mylar balloons and I was putting them, you know, just little letter mylar balloons and I was blowing them up and I had to write congrats. And they, they all came with all the right letters. Did you say congrats? I said congrats. I forgot to put the G on the little, like stringing them up. So we were laughing about that. It was like congrats. Which is, Which to is say, like letters with rat. are hard. <laughs> congrats. Congrats. Yeah. Um, I do find, if, especially if I want letters. to put letters in it. The more attached I am to the idea of something turning out a certain way, which with letters, they have to turn out a certain way or else you can't read them, yeah. um, the more disappointed I'll end up being. So Just stick with symbols. <laughs> do yourself a favor. Or you know what you can do, Phil? Instead of carving, um, there are lots of pre-made letter stamps that you can oh, yeah. use. So, and you better. can get them in all kinds of fonts and all kinds of point sizes, and then you would just stamp them individually. I think that would be, you know, almost all the work is done for you. But not to say, who am I to say you can't do it? Pro I'll say it. Prove us all wrong. Yeah. What's the opposite of inspiring? Because that's what I want to be. <laughs> We're naysaying. I want to despire you Despire. from trying to print letters. <laughs> This also comes from a, a long history of bookmaking, where that comes up all the time. Mm. When you, if you try to do transfers, that's just, oh, just that don't. is just don't, just don't do it. Mm -hmm. Just leave it for the mm -hmm. for, for the, the typesetters. Mm -hmm. yeah. hey, I, are you gonna print the back too? If I can, yeah. Which I think it's down here. This is the back. I'll print the. I love the way this looks. Those little whiskers. It looks really fun. Well, maybe we'll do one more and then we'll say goodbye. Okay. We can speed print in, in private. <laughs> do a time lapse. We could do a time. You were very fast downstairs. We did a practice run and I thought she was just going to get four done. And then I turned around to get some grapes. And then when I came back, she had finished an entire yard of fabric. It was pretty rad. Yay, Willie. Willie, you want to come back here? Are you sleeping? You want to come back? Uh, Did we get a Willie? Yeah. And see how long you can it jump through. You to carve the, the balloon stamps. It took me, um, I'd say, a half an hour. <gasps> Look at what you I was, did. I was very inspired. Oh, the question was how long did it take me to carve the Willie stamp? I had uh, the force of inspiration behind me, not de inspiration, which is what I hope we imparted to you today. Sonia, thank you so much for coming to join thank us. Thank you for having me, and thank you for carving this wonderful stamp of my dog. I mean, it's like <laughs> the ultimate, I don't know, tribute, I, dog I have to tribute. Say, I am a fan. Yeah. I'm a fan of Willie and a fan of all of you watching at home. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, find us on Thursday, and we'll see you then. <laughs>